Order. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yep. Vincent. Here. Gibson. Here. Clarity Cotton Zero. Here. Misho. Here. Witham. Here. Goodwin. Here. Cameron. Here. Messier. Here. Councillor Misho will lead the council in the Pledge of Allegiance. Next on the agenda is the recognition of our indigenous people, our native ancestral Americans. This meeting takes place on Indikina, which is the unceded traditional ancestral homeland of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki peoples, past and present. We acknowledge and honor with gratitude the land, waterways, living beings of the Alnabuk, the people who have stewarded Indikina throughout the generations. Uh, item four on the agenda are any scheduled public hearings, which we have none tonight. Uh, so we'll go to number five, which is comments by visitors. Uh, Summers Resort City Council and Mayor's Office welcomes all visitors and encourages you to voice your opinions and views at council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7C, uh, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the council wishes to suspend the rules. Speakers shall not enter into a debate with any person, the mayor, council members, city manager, or department heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight? Anyone looking to speak? All right. Oh, we have someone. Oh, all right. Seeing as there's no one, we'll move on to number six, which is uh, approval of the consent calendar. The chair will obtain a motion to approve the consent calendar, which includes the minutes of the city council meeting held on February 20th, 2024. Do I have a motion? Yes, Councilor Witham. Move to approve the consent calendar. Thank you, Councilor Witham. Moves to approve the consent calendar as presented, seconded by Councilor Cameron. Question before the council is the adoption of the consent calendar. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Okay, ayes appear to have it. Ayes have it. Consent calendar is adopted. Item seven on the agenda is comments by city councilors. Are there any comments tonight by councilors? Yes, Councilor Messier. Thank you. Um, I guess it's my every two week update of the warming center. We now have tent city in the back on the hot top so it's not a warming center it is turned into a tent city just to let everybody know i will not be supporting at any point in time in the future as long as i'm here any extension of the original agreement or even an extension for next season i believe we should give them ample time the tri communities to figure something out because that is not working. We are going to have the fence company across the street. We have speed of sound. We have people that are going by, and what they are seeing isn't what they should be seeing. Um, that is valuable land for commercial industrial development. That's what it should be, not for what's going on. That's what I'll say to that. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments by councilors? Yes, go ahead, Councilor Gibson. I have to second the councilor. Um, I drive by there on a regular basis. Uh, saw the tent city. Um, one o'clock in the afternoon uh, the other day, there were like 30 people in the parking lot. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, and I'm starting to lean towards his feelings on it that it's a bad image. I would like to be able to do something to help these people, but they need to help us too. And that's, we can't have it going this way. It's just not a good situation. Thank you. Other comments by councillors this evening? Comments by councillors. All right, thank you. We will move on to agenda item eight, which is communications. We have none. Agenda item nine is presentations of petitions and disposal thereof by reference or otherwise, which we have none. Uh, and next on the agenda is number 10, which is the mayor's report. 
Um, so first up, I would like to formally uh, request the Mayor's Art and Culture Commission uh, to meet regarding the Mayor's Office uh, Art Contest that I've been hosting. Uh, we've received a total of six pieces that were submitted by community members to review. And um, I hope to announce the winners uh, starting uh, this month at some point with the intention that the first piece be displayed in the Mayor's Office starting April 1st. Um, I hope the committee can review the pieces and determine uh, the winners for the year. So we'll need you know, three pieces for the three quarters of the year that we have left uh, now that we're through one quarter. Um, so I would love for you all to meet. I'll share with uh, the chair uh, the submissions that we received and have you all vote on the three that should be our winners. Um, I also received an announcement from a variety, or excuse me, about a variety of arts and culture grants that are being made uh, available by the New Hampshire State Council of the Arts, and I would request the committee also discuss these uh, grant opportunities and see if any fit the needs of the community, which I'll share with you as well. So I had already talked with our chair, uh, Chairwoman Cameron, but just want to at least let others know that hopefully there will be a meeting coming up soon. Um, also wanted to thank Stratford Regional Planning Commission and the Summersworth Planning Board for their partnership on the development of the housing chapter for the Summersworth Master Plan. Uh, this remains as a draft, but it was presented at the most recent planning board meeting um, and is now available for viewing online. Um, it's quite exciting. There's a ton of work that went into this, uh, a lot of community input as well as engagement from folks uh, throughout uh, Summersworth. And I think it serves as a really high quality draft uh, that the planning board will use to develop their final version for the housing chapter. Uh, so for those interested, this can be found on our city's website on the um, page dedicated to the city's planning office. Uh, Mayor's Housing Task Force met for the first time on Thursday, February 22nd at 5 p.m. Uh, main focus of our meeting was to set reasonable objectives for this task force as we begin tackling uh, the housing crisis. Uh, we had an extensive discussion on the various goals and desires of our 10-member committee uh, with many, many phenomenal ideas being shared. Um, much of our discussion centered around how best to partner with the city and its various boards, uh, how to make zoning changes that could benefit the creation of all forms of housing in the city, um, how best to elicit community input and develop a sense of place and neighborhood feel to various parts of our community, um, various ways to simplify application processes, uh, our city regulations, and how to better partner with developers. Um, we also discussed ways to keep the community affordable and hopefully spark economic development. So tons of ideas and tons of various categories. Uh, all things were thrown on the table. It was quite, uh, quite a great meeting. Uh, these goals were then captured and will soon be shared out with the committee uh, with the hopes that the task force can then review all the goals that we came up with, distill them down into categories, and then hopefully approve uh, these goals at a future meeting. Uh, task force next meeting will be held as a joint meeting with the planning board and representatives from Stratford Regional Planning Commission on March 20th at uh, 5.30. And this will be a workshop specific to the newly developed proposed draft of the housing chapter that was just submitted. Um, uh, next up, uh, I'd like to make the public aware of a number of upcoming dates. I put these in my uh, newsletter, but worth mentioning tonight. Uh, I think it's also helpful for the council too to remember some of these dates. Um, this Thursday, March 7th, there is a superintendent community forum here at City Hall at 6. If people are interested in meeting one of the candidates for our uh, new superintendent's position. We also have a State of the City Address, which I will present on Monday, March 18th, here at City Hall at 6 p.m. Uh, we have beginnings of our uh, budget discussion, so the budget for next year, 2024-2025, will be introduced to Summers or City Council uh, the same night, mon Monday, March 18th at 7. Uh, Monday, March, or excuse me, April 1st, we will have a budget presentation by the City Manager at 6 p.m. And then we have um, a planned workshop meeting at, on Saturday, April 6th at uh, 8.30 here in Council Chambers. Um, two other items, uh, one related to the warming center that was brought up. Uh, I do want folks to know that I have a meeting with the Tri-City Mayors on Monday, March 11th, where we'll be discussing the concerns that you just shared. Um, I wrote them down so as I can capture them as best as possible when I have this meeting. Um, but yes, we have been made aware, uh, Dover has been made aware about uh, the folks that have been tenting on the property because Dover owns the building and the property there. Um, the city manager and the mayor of Dover are aware of this. 
Um, but we will be discussing in uh, depth uh, the warming center at this meeting. Again, if you have any other concerns in advance of this meeting, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, send me an email, shoot me a text, whatever works. If you're watching at home, please feel free to do the same. Send me an email. Um, I would love to hear uh, your concerns so I can bring this up at that meeting on Monday the 11th. Um, and lastly, I believe the city manager will mention this too, but I also formally request that for resolution 40-24 that we have a second reading on that tonight. Uh, so just wanted to make that aware. If the council wishes to do so, I'll be happy to have that read for a second time. Uh, and that concludes my mayor's report. So next on the agenda is item 11, which is reports of standing committees. Uh, Finance committee, chairman with them. Thank you, <clears throat> excuse me. Finance committee met on February 21st at 4 p.m. here in council chambers. We had a fairly uh, lengthy agenda. I'll try to go through it quickly and just cover the highlights. Uh, first item on our agenda was to review the community power uh, cost sharing agreement and member services contract. This is the next step in uh, getting us to having Summersworth community power as the power uh, uh, generation, if you will, for the city of Summersworth. Um, these two agreements are, uh, I would characterize them as uh, boilerplate documents. Uh, it was my understanding from Henry Herndon from the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire who was in attendance at the meeting that if the city of Summersworth were to change these documents or request a change to these documents, it would then have to go back in front of all of the other community power uh, communities here in the state of New Hampshire. These documents are the same for each of them, so all would have to agree to it. So uh, the good news with them is that th there's nothing in them that's uh, terribly uh, restrictive or concerning to the city of Summersworth. Uh, these documents have been vetted by legal staffs in any number of communities. So we felt very comfortable with the, the vetting that's been done uh, of these particular uh, documents. We had a discussion about uh, some elements within the documents. Uh, we, we talked about uh, risk rate and reserving policies. We talked about uh, the, uh, the, the money that might be available for uh, our use as it's aggregated. We talked about um, even things like uh, personal data, if that were to be breached through some sort of cyber activity, uh, is that uh, insured by a community power, uh, uh, those sorts of things. So it was a good robust discussion and I would uh, say that over the number of meetings that we've had with uh, Henry Herndon from Community Power, he has been very knowledgeable, approachable, and you know, right there with the answers. So uh, as a partner, uh, I've been very pleased with uh, the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire. So uh, with all of that, the committee uh, moved unanimously to move these two items forward. Uh, and there, are res there is a resolution 3624 to that effect in first reading uh, before us here this evening. We then had a discussion about uh, public safety communications repeater in the highway radio base station. Uh, we reported out on this uh, some time ago uh, that we needed to upgrade uh, the repeater, which uh, interestingly enough is uh, at Hilltop School. It's actually a backup generator that the city owns specifically for that up there. Um, what we've determined is that uh, the original amount not to exceed of $95,000 is no longer enough. Uh, as we got into the project a little bit further, we being the city, uh, we determined that there is additional cost associated with upgrading the electrical at the Hilltop School to support the new repeater. So that raised the price to about $124,000. Uh, this will be funded with uh, ARPA monies. Uh, so no impact on the tax rate. Uh, the committee supports moving forward with this at an amount not to exceed 130,000, uh, a little bit of uh, extra in there for contingency. Uh, I would say that we did also discuss as part of the discussion of uh, this resolution, which is 40-24, again, suggesting for a second reading here this evening, uh, that uh, as we move forward with uh, the engineering and ultimate construction of a new standpipe water tower at Hill, uh, up near the Noble Pines, uh, that perhaps at that time we consider uh, a strategy to relocate the repeater from the Hilltop School 
uh, to the water tower uh, just to keep it all on city property. I would note for the public's edification that uh, we do have agreements in place with Chinberg Properties, uh, so we, we are there. Uh, they know about it. It's an official agreement, uh, but ideally we, we ought to have it on our own property, and that would be the ultimate uh, goal. Nonetheless, we do support the resolution uh, committee agreed uh, unanimously. We then discussed a permitting, planning, and code software. Uh, this is a uh, request of the Department of Development Services. Uh, it is in the CIP. Uh, this would effectively remove it from the CIP. We would plan to fund this through uh, ARPA monies as well. Um, so we're looking to move forward with that. It would be a five-year contract with an organization known as SmartGov. Uh, currently, a lot of our permitting, uh, planning, and code-related activities are all done in a very manual fashion using things such as Excel spreadsheets and things of that nature. This would automate the process and ultimately be able to, to build it out so that it would be easier for developers and others to use it as well. Uh, would integrate with other city systems. So uh, it's time to move that department uh, technologically wise uh, forward and the committee supports moving forward with that uh, unanimously uh, as well. Uh, we then got into a discussion of the constitutional way complete street bids and bonding as well as some other issues related to the constitutional way complete streets project. Uh, the bids were received. Uh, maybe it comes as no surprise. They were all a bit more than the original engineering uh, estimates. Uh, the lowest bid was N. Grenice and Sons out of Massachusetts. Um, Wright Pierce engineers who did the design work for Constitutional Way uh, did some background check on N. Grenice and Sons and they had favorable reviews. Several committee members noted that they've done work here in New Hampshire, uh, close by City of Dover, a water main replacement project along Central Avenue. So the committee is very comfortable moving forward with that vendor. Uh, the total cost of the project bid came in at $2,073,006. We suggest a 5% contingency and another $120,000 for Wright Pierce for uh, inspection and engineering oversight of the project, uh, bringing the total project cost to approximately $2.3 million. Uh, we talked about funding sources for the project. Uh, about 1700 would come from the general fund and 275 from the water fund and $321,000 from the sewer fund. Uh, these funds can all support that. Uh, at the end of the day, if we were to do a 15-year bond of this project, it would have uh, approximately what we believe right now, a uh, uh, five cent increase on the tax rate. Um, we discussed as part of this uh, the fact that we would probably uh, look to bond this uh, in a year where the High Street project retires. So. Uh, the, the bond would be delayed a little bit, but uh, we can move forward with this project using something known as a bond anticipation note. So in anticipation of the bond, uh, if, if that uh, makes sense. Committee supports this unanimously. Um, and again, there are resolutions to that effect for first reading here tonight. Uh, I would just note the discussion uh, about other pieces related to this project. There are two Retaining walls on the southerly side of Constitutional Way, one by the uh, law firm uh, closer to High Street, and the other the parking lot for the Shiva Market on the, the other end of the street. Those are both privately owned retaining walls, but they abut the sidewalk, obviously, uh, and they are both in a state of disrepair. Uh, we have been in communication with those property owners and will remain in communication with those property owners suggesting that this is the time to take care of those walls because there'll be a moratorium on any activity for five years after this project. And in all likelihood, they'll be able to leverage the mobilization of the contractor, Grenice and Sons, to do the walls much cheaper than they could probably hire them out uh, on their own. So the, the timing to do it is right now. Uh, we can't force them to do it, but we're strongly encouraging them uh, to do it uh, as part of this project. 
The other thing that we looked at as part of this project, uh, and I think it was brought up by uh, Councillor Parity Catanzaro, was an additional crosswalk at the High Street Constitutional uh, intersection. Uh, right now for High Street, there's only one crosswalk and it crosses on the southerly side. To add a crosswalk to the northerly side, uh, there are some cost implications, somewhere between 14 and 17,000 to add that crosswalk. There's still some engineering concerns about it. Uh, there are some traffic safety concerns about vehicles leaving Constitutional Way because the crosswalk would be a bit around the corner uh, that were raised by the engineer. Um, it is outside of the scope of this project, so the committee thought not to weave it into this project, but might be something if council had uh, a desire for that, that we look to uh, address that through some other means uh, down the road. But the good news is we at least have some engineering data and some uh, thoughts regarding it uh, so uh, we can have a more informed decision. Uh, committee had a discussion of water and sewer rates. Um, currently our, our water and sewer rates are keeping pace, but we know that they will, as we look at the data fall behind, particularly as we get into some of these larger scale projects. We're looking at a, a significant uh, expense with the new water tower at the Noble Pines. Uh, we look at the next phase of upgrades to the city's wastewater treatment plant, which will be in the tens of millions of dollars. So in order to have uh, appropriate rates to cover that, we need to begin moving the needle now. The thought process is, don't wait until we do those projects and have a huge hit on the rates, rather incrementally step them up to cover those projected costs. So we looked at a number of different graphs that look at uh, the ability to raise funds for those two uh, enterprise funds. And the committee is supporting moving forward with a two-year plan for a 10% increase in each of the two years. Um, Sounds like a lot, I guess 10% is a lot, but we need to keep pace with our infrastructure. Uh, if it's of any solace, uh, our rates would still be well within uh, what other communities are paying, in fact, less than most communities. So um, not that that should be a, a bellwether, but it is at least one, right? So uh, we are supporting uh, moving forward with that rate increase on the water and sewer uh, funds. Speaking of water, we talked about our meter replacement program. Uh, that is almost done on the residential side. Uh, that has uh, worked uh, very, very well. The contractor has done uh, an exceptional job. Uh, we do know that we'll need an additional $125,000 to complete that project. Um, what we discovered is there were more meters for the residential side needing replacement than we thought. We thought some of the newer residential developments might have newer meters. They did not. So it was just a, an increase in the number of meters. Um, the vendor isn't charging us more just to charge us more. They're charging us more because we did more, right? Uh, kind of simple math that way. The additional 125000 will allow us to move forward with uh, about 335 uh, commercial water meters scheduled out over the next uh, several years. So committee supports uh, moving forward with this uh, unanimously as well. I think the next item we talked about was the uh, fire station. We had an update on the building project and the uh, financing of that project. Um, right now, as of this meeting, it looks like that project will be uh, about $100,000 below the projected budget of $9 million. Uh, Chief Delner was at the meeting and talked about uh, a number of different items to close out the project that he's still working on. That'll run somewhere between ten dollars and $15,000. Um, uh, some additional uh, lighting, some additional furniture, some additional items uh, just to move the, the station to that final stage. We also had an update from the chief about a $120,000 HUD grant. This goes back many, many years. Uh, Congressman Pappas uh, solicited for this HUD money to help support the construction of a fire training tower. But as we got into the project, Councilor Pepin knows is chairing that committee, Councilor Vincent as well, that the tower was going to cost us uh, 400 and something thousand dollars. So we scaled that back to remain on budget, some value <laughs> engineering, if you will. We thought that this money was gone, but 
Uh, thank you, Chief Delner and members of your team for communicating with HUD, and they've been al they're allowing us to rededicate that money to other fire department needs. Uh, we look to purchase a new uh, boat and trailer uh, for water rescue activities uh, and some other equipment for training. Uh, these are items uh, like the, the boat that'll come off the CIP as well without having an impact on the tax rate. So we thank the chief and his team for, for pursuing that and getting us to that stage. Lastly, uh, let's see here. We had a very quick discussion about the uh, city manager uh, in his final stages of preparing the fiscal year 25 budget. Uh, and we also had a discussion about uh, fire department breathing apparatus. Uh, we are currently in year one of a multi-year replacement for breathing apparatus. Um, however, the fire chief indicated that uh, he is looking at a federal grant to purchase the remaining breathing apparatus. So again, we can remove those out of the CIP through grant money. Uh, it is a competitive grant process, so there are no guarantees, but um, I can tell you that I've seen grants for breathing apparatus awarded many, many times. It's a high priority item from a grant perspective. It's a firefighter safety piece of equipment. So we're hopeful that we can do that. Uh, that's allowed the manager to remove that item from uh, the budget, looks, which looks to be rather tough this year. So sorry for the long report, but there was a lot of stuff that we talked about. Thank you. Next up is Government Operations Committee, Chairman Mishu. Uh, we have not met, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, next up, Economic Development Committee, Chairman Goodwin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, we met directly before this meeting this evening. Um, there were a number of uh, topics we discussed. Uh, the first uh, being an item coming off of our uh, prior meetings goal setting session, uh, we had uh, identified uh, an interest in limiting the use of car washes along High Street along with other auto-oriented businesses such as gas stations, repair shops, and the like given the um, density of those along the primary frontage of High Street. Um, and uh, also to revise zoning to include language that creates a buffer between repair shops or ref refines our definition of uh, the required buffer between repair shops in residential areas and uh, refine some of the requirements for repair shops uh, for sound attenuation purposes. Um, and that is in response to a number of uh, resident complaints we've had with the existing repair shops around town um, being disturbed by nearby um, mechanical uh, operations and uh, auto repair. Um, so uh, the committee unanimously agreed to uh, pass that language on to council for its review. So you'll be seeing that soon. <clears throat> um, the second agenda item we discussed was uh, scheduling a public um, community meeting to discuss the reuse of One Winter Street. Uh, council had previously considered uh, this site for uh, an RFP. Uh, and then later um, to have it become parking and I believe a food truck uh, destination of some sort. And uh, with a little reflection, some uh, staff suggested that we take, um, take a second look at whether or not that is feasible and if there's demand for those uses. And the committee thought that the best next step was to solicit um, neighborhood feedback. Um, so scheduling a community meeting for April 11th at 7 p.m. Uh, is the target date at the moment. Um, and sort of there'll be a bit of a, a framing discussion around the constraints of the site, um, past efforts um, and assessments on it, um, but then also just generally trying to get a sense of, um, you know, what the community feels like is the highest and best use for that site given its constraints. Um, so it would obviously be non-binding, but uh, hopefully informative for us to um, make some decisions moving forward regarding that, um, that city-owned parcel. Uh, we then discussed um, our, reviewed our prior goals and uh, set a prioritization level for those um, and made some notes along the way. I won't go through all of them, though I will highlight uh, a number of the higher priority ones, including um, chapter 31, Community Revitalization Tax Release Incentive Updates, also known as 79E. 
um, that is probably going to be in coordination with um, the, mass, the housing uh, update to the master plan um, and the housing committee, but there are potentially some other revisions to the 790 ordinance and the uh, strongly economic uh, component to it. So uh, we put that on here as one of our primary priorities. Um, talking uh, extensively about ongoing efforts with uh, our uh, brand, you know, city brand, uh, communication, wayfinding, signage, um, you know, high priority, long uh, iterative process uh, to keep those efforts moving forward. Talked extensively about uh, parking enforcement and uh, par uh, future parking assessment. Um, uh, so the parking is definitely an item that we're thinking about, particularly in the downtown along high and market streets. Um, uh, and then another item we talked about was um, soliciting feedback from folks doing business in the city, uh, whether it's developers doing construction or um, some other yet to be determined uh, entity, but essentially thinking that it might be useful for us to uh, have an assessment, an outside assessment of, of how we could make things um, better or at least get their feedback on how the process went. So maybe creating a survey to solicit that, uh, that feedback. Um, and that is it. Thank you. Uh, next up is Public Safety Committee, Chairman Pepin. I have nothing to report this evening. Thank you. Uh, next up, Public Works and the Environment Committee, Chairman Witham. No report. Thank you. And lastly, Recreation Committee, Chairwoman Cameron. Looking to schedule in the next couple of weeks. Thank you so much. All right, next up is agenda item 12, which is reports <coughs> of special committees. Are there any reports of special committees? Yes, Councilor Messier. Thank you. Uh, on February 27th, the uh, Lamprey Regional Co-op, the trash we met, um, reviewed budgets and approved a budget to go to public hearing this month at some point. Um, and then for a final vote in April, our closure cost and operating costs will be less than last year. Um, and there's two reports of the audit, so I'll leave them in with Bob. So that meeting ended in like a half hour. Thank you. Other reports of special committees? Yes, Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, traffic City uh, Traffic Safety <laughs> Committee met on February 21st at 2 o'clock, 2 p.m., and uh, everyone was in attendance except for uh, Paul Robitus, who was excused. And the first item on the agenda uh, was additional street lighting uh, for the crosswalk and interstate drive. It was a request by uh, Contratech, um, and um, that was actually tabled um, for, to get additional prices uh, on the lighting. Second um, agenda was uh, the speed limit change from 30 to 20 uh, miles per hour uh, on Noble Street. Uh, and the area that they were thinking, the area that they were talking about was up at by the playground. And the chairman, uh, Chairman Duval, stated that there has not been one or any record uh, of an accident or incident uh, in this location at the Pines. Um, to actually drop the speed limit <clears throat> and it's not just you can go up there and change signs as a process uh, so without uh, any issues um, what we decided to do is deny it and that was um, the motion carried 7-0 the next item on agenda was a change of uh, parking ordinance on Main Street from Indigo Hill to Wiggins Court uh, from one hour to two hours and the reason for this change uh, well, the request was because um, it appears that the the garage there uh, is parking their vehicles out there uh, and using it as their own personal parking lot, and at times they're doing repairs. Um, we the 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 request uh, was denied, and the motion carried seven zero. But we're going to be working with uh, code enforcement to uh, try to fix that problem. That problem's been going on for a little while now. And we've tried to reach out um, 
to the owners uh, with no prevail. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda was um, additional street lighting in Franca Drive. The chairman provided a summary of, of the request, and he noted that Franca Drive is a rural area. He stated that there has been, in the last three years, uh, there has been no complaint calls uh, for service on Franca Drive. And, you know, if you know the area, it's rural. It's a comfortable setting. Uh, it's not a high-crime area. Not that um, it needs to be. Uh, however, it's comfortable. Um, and I think that, uh, so with that being said, um, uh, we, we denied the request, and that also carried 7-0. Um, uh, Okay, um, we had we had one miscellaneous uh, item that was brought up by the city manager, and it was the blocking of Washington Street at the light. So it would be Washington High Street, West High, and and Noble. Um, apparently, when the light turns red, uh, I, we don't know. I think it could be a backup from Berwick uh, Light. But people are in the intersection, and it's causing a problem for the other people when their light turns green. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is um, we're going to have the police department um, do some activity there. And we adjourned at 2.30 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Other special committees? The reports of special committees? All right. Seeing none, um, I'll turn it over to the city manager who will deliver his manager's report. Thank you, Your Honor. I offer the following comments to the City Council this evening. Resolution 3624 regarding authorizing the City Manager to execute the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire Cost Sharing Agreement Member Services Contract and to approve the associated policies for risk rates, reserves, and data security and privacy. As mentioned, the Finance Committee met and voted to support this resolution. I uh, provided you materials that were provided to the Finance Committee. Again, as mentioned, Mr. Henry Herndon from the coalition will be in attendance at the March 18th council meeting to answer any questions when council takes this up uh, for discussion and potential vote. Should you have any questions before the meeting, please send them along to me so, so I can share them with Mr. Herndon. Next resolution, 3724, authorizing the manager to contract with N. Granice and Sons of Salem, Mass., to construct the Constitutional Way Complete Streets Project. Again, as, as reported by the chair, the Finance Committee met and voted to support this resolution. I provided you a copy of Wright Pierce's project engineer Britt Ekstrom's letter of recommendation to contract with this, con with this particular company. Uh, and as you will see um, and read, this company was the lowest of three bids received. Next resolution, 3824, authorizing a, a bond to construct the Constitutional Way Complete Streets Project. The Finance Committee, again, as reported, voted to support this resolution. I provided you a memorandum from Finance Director Scott Smith that spells out the various cost allocations regarding estimated project costs in its entirety and the funding breakdown between the general fund and the two utility funds. Uh, as required, Your Honor, a public hearing should be scheduled on March 18th at 7 p.m. for next council meeting. The next resolution, 3924, authorizing the manager to sign a contract with Wright Pierce Engineers of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to provide resident inspection and construction engineering services associated with the Constitutional Way Complete Streets Project. Again, um, Finance Committee voted to support this resolution, and I provided you a copy of the proposed contract with this engineering firm. Resolution 4024 regarding authorization for the manager to use funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and contract with two-way communications of Portsmouth, New Hampshire to replace the radio repeater, as reported, at the uh, Hilltop uh, Apartments and update the Public Works Department base station. Again, uh, Finance Committee, as reported out, voted to support this resolution. I provided you materials that were supplied to the committee for your review. Uh, I would mention also that the Public Safety Committee had also voted to support this action item. Uh, council may want to consider waiving council rules to allow for a second reading and a vote this evening. Uh, we may want to act swiftly to avoid any price es escalation of the equipment, as well as making note of a possible lengthy timeline to receive the equipment as we experienced when we got the new uh, communications dispatch equipment. It took quite a while for that to come in. 
Under other, a vote to authorize the manager to take all necessary action for the city to participate in the New Hampshire DOJ Department of Justice State Settlement Agreement regarding opioid litigation against five companies. Three are major pharmacy chains, CVS, Walmart, and Walgreens. The other two are opiate manufacturers, Allegram and Teva. I received an email from the AG's office asking the city to consider taking this action. If approved, the city is agreeing not to seek separate legal action against these companies. As a participant with the state, the city will be able to seek certain reimbursements from the fund for expenses incurred related to opioid responses. Legislation was enacted in the state to establish an opioid abatement trust fund and an advisory commission to oversee it. Attached are documents I received from the Attorney General's office. This vote would be similar to the votes taken by the City Council uh, in December of 2021 and in September of 2022. Uh, and then this special note uh, on the informational items on all the uh, meetings coming up that was reported out by Your Honor. That will conclude my comments this evening. Thank you, Your Honor, members of Council. Thank you. All right. Next up is agenda item 13, which is nominations, appointments, and elections. We have none this evening. Uh, next up is item 14, which is items that have been laid upon the table. We also have none. Um, next up is unfinished business. We also have none, <laughs> which brings us to 16 new business. Uh, first up are our resolutions, which is um, resolution 3624, the chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on resolution 3624, which is to authorize the city manager to execute the community power and Power Coalition of New Hampshire cost sharing agreement member services contract and to approve the associated policies for risk rates, reserves, and data security and privacy. Clerk. Resolution number 3624 to authorize the city manager to execute the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire cost sharing agreement member services contract and to approve the associated policies for risk, rates, reserves, and data security and privacy. March 4th, 2024. Whereas the city Whereas the Summersworth City Council adopted Resolution 2624 on December 11, 2023, to adopt the Summersworth Community Power Aggregation Plan and to authorize the City Manager to submit the plan with the New Hampshire Public Utilities Commission for review and approval. And whereas on January 9, 2024, the City was notified by the New Hampshire Public Utility Commission that the Summersworth Community Power Aggregation Plan has been reviewed and approved. And whereas now that the Summersworth Community Power Aggregation Plan has been approved, the City is required to execute the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire Cost Sharing Agreement Member Services Contract and approve the associated policies for risk, rates, reserves, and data security and privacy. And whereas the City Council would like to designate Deputy City Manager Finance Director Scott Smith as the authorized officer for member service decisions. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to execute the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire cost-sharing agreement member services contract, and be it further resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Council approves the associated policies of the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire cost-sharing agreement for risk, rates, reserves, and data security and privacy, and to designate Deputy City Manager Finance Director Scott Smith as the authorized officer for member service decisions. Author, uh, excuse me, sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Dennis Messier, Martin Pepin, Kenneth S. Vincent, approved City Attorney. Thank you. I would also ask that I be added as a sponsor to this. Um, resolution 36-24, having been read a first and second time, will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Or, yeah. Um, excuse me. Next is... Uh, resolution. Yes, go ahead. I don't know if it matters, but you just said it had been read a second time. I think you're right. I think I've caught myself too. I was like, I think I said something off there, but I couldn't figure out what it was. Thank you. Having been read a first time, we'll remain in first reading. Thank you. Um, chair recognizes the clerk for first reading on resolution 37-24, which is to authorize the city manager to construct or contract with N. Grenice and Sons of Salem, Massachusetts to construct the Constitutional Way Complete Streets Project. City Clerk. Resolution number 3724, to authorize the City Manager to contract with N. Grenice and Sons of Salem, Massachusetts to construct the Con Constitutional Way Complete Streets Project. March 4th, 2024. 
whereas the City Council adopted Resolution 1818 on December 4th, 2017, authorizing the City Manager to contract with Wright Pierce Engineers to provide engineering services for the design of various Complete Streets projects, including Constitutional Way, and whereas the Constitutional Way Complete Street project design was completed and bid specifications were prepared and released, requesting bids from qualified contractors to construct the project. And whereas the city received bids on February 8th, 2024, which were reviewed by Wright Pierce engineers, and they raised no objection to awarding the contract to N. Grenice and Sons of Salem, Massachusetts for an amount of $2,073,006. And whereas the Finance Committee has reviewed the bids received with city staff and recommends contracting with N. Grenice and Sons of Salem, Massachusetts for an amount of $2,073,006. And whereas the Finance Committee recommends including an amount of $103,650 with the project total for contingencies and authorize the City Manager to increase the contract to an amount not to exceed $2,176,656 if needed and determined to be in the best interest of the City. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to contract with N. Grenice and Sons of Salem, Massachusetts to construct the Constitutional Way Complete Streets project for an amount of $2,073,006 and be it further resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that an amount of $103,650 is included with the project total for contingencies and the City Manager is authorized to increase the contract to an amount not to exceed $2,176,656 if needed and is determined to be in the best interest of the city. Sponsored by Councillors David A. Witham, Dennis Messier, Martin Pepin, Kenneth S. Vincent, approved city attorney. Thank you. Resolution 37-24, having been read a first time, will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on Resolution 38-24. Uh, City Council vote to authorize a bond to construct the Constitutional Way Complete Streets project. City Clerk. Resolution number 3824. City Council vote to authorize a bond to construct the Constitutional Way Complete Streets project. March 4, 2024. Whereas the City requested and received bids for the construction of the Constitutional Way Complete Streets project. And whereas the project costs include construction of water infrastructure, sewer infrastructure, drainage infrastructure, sidewalk and roadway improvements, lighting and other streetscaping improvements, construction, engineering and inspection, and any other ancillary costs associated with the project. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that an amount not to exceed $2,367,256 is appropriated to construct the Constitutional Way Complete Streets project. And be it further resolved, that the city manager is authorized to borrow up to $2,367,256 under the Municipal Finance Act and to issue bonds and notes payable within 15 years from their dates. And the city manager is authorized to issue temporary notes in anticipation of the issue of these bonds or notes. And the city manager is authorized to apply for, obtain, and accept federal, state, or other aid, if any, which may be available for said project and the estimated useful life of this project is expected to exceed 15 years. Sponsored by Councillors David A. Witham, Dennis Messier, Martin Pepin, Kenneth S. Vincent, approved city attorney. Thank you. Resolution 38-24, having been read a first time, will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Um, chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on Resolution 39-24, which is to authorize the city manager to sign a contract with Wright Pierce Engineers of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to provide resident inspection and construction engineering services associated with Constitutional Way Complete Streets Project. City Clerk. Resolution number 3924, to authorize the city manager to sign a contract with Wright Pierce Engineers of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to provide resident inspection and construction engineering services associated with the Constitutional Way Complete Streets Project. March 4, 2024. Whereas Wright Pierce Engineers of Portsmouth, New Hampshire have provided the city with pre-construction services such as engineering, design, and development of bid specifications for the Constitutional Way Complete Streets Project. And whereas the city has received bids from qualified contractors for the construction of the Constitutional Way Complete Street Project and will require resident inspection and construction engineering services associated with the construction of this project. 
and whereas Wright Pierce engineers have provided a proposal in the amount of $190,600 to provide resident inspection and construction engineering services for this project. Whereas, and whereas, the Finance Committee has reviewed the proposal with City staff and recommends contracting with Wright Pierce engineers for resident inspection and construction engineering services associated with the construction of this project for an amount of $190,600. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City Manager is authorized to sign a contract with Wright Pierce engineers of Portsmouth, New Hampshire to provide resident inspection and construction engineering services associated with the construction of the Constitutional Way Complete Street Project for an amount not to exceed $190,600 and to take any other action related to this contract determined to be in the best interest of the city. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Dennis Messier, Martin Pepin, Kenneth S. Vincent, approved City Attorney. Thank you. Resolution 39-24, having been read a first time, will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on Resolution 40-24 to authorize the city manager to use funding from the American Rescue Plan Act in contract uh, with two-way communications of Portsmouth, New Hampshire to replace the radio repeater and update the Public Works Department base station. City Clerk. Resolution number 4024, to authorize the city manager to use funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and contract with two-way communications of Portsmouth, New Hampshire to replace the radio repeater and update the Public Works Department base station. March 4th, 2024. Whereas the Summersworth Capital Impro Improvement Program for fiscal years 2025 through 2030 includes a project to replace the radio repeater housed at the former Hilltop School used for communications by police, fire, ambulance, and public works. And whereas the Summersworth Capital Improvement Program for fiscal years, fiscal years 2025 through 2030 includes a project to update the communications base station at the Public Works facility. And whereas city staff obtained a quote from two-way communications of Portsmouth, New Hampshire for an amount of $124,471 to replace this equipment. And whereas the Finance Committee reviewed this project with city staff and determined it is the best, in the best interest of the city to utilize American Rescue Plan Act funds to start this project as soon as possible and recommends awarding a contract to two-way communications for this project. And whereas the Finance Committee also recommended, recommends adding an amount of $5,529 to this project for contingencies and authorize the city manager to increase the contract to an amount not to exceed $130,000 if needed and determined to be in the best interest of the city. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the city manager may use funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and contract with two-way communications of Portsmouth, New Hampshire to replace the radio repeater housed at the former Hilltop School and update the communications base station at the Public Works facility for an amount of $124,471 and be it further resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that an amount of $5,529 is included with this project for contingencies and the City Manager is authorized to increase the contract to an amount not to exceed $130,000 if needed and determined to be in the best interest of the City. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Dennis Messier, Martin Pepin, Kenneth S. Vincent, Crystal Parody Catanzaro, approved City Attorney. Your Honor? Yes, Councilor Witham. I'd like to move to suspend Council rules for a second reading of the resolution tonight. Councilor Witham makes a motion for a second reading on resolution 40-24. Is there a second? Yes, Councilor Messier seconds. Seconded by Councilor Messier. So, question before the Council is on a second reading of resolution 40-24. Is there a discussion before we go to our vote? Okay, seeing none. Um, if you are in favor of the motion, you will state by saying aye. All right. Aye. 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 All right. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Okay. Ayes appear to have it. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Uh, so the chair will recognize the clerk for a second reading on resolution 40 24. Resolution number 40 4024. <laughs> to authorize the city manager to use funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and contract with two way communications of Portsmouth, New Hampshire to replace the radio repeater and update the Public Works Department base station. All right, resolution 40-24 having been read a first and second time is now open to amendment. Okay, seeing no amendment, uh, the chair will look for a motion on resolution 40-24. Yes, Councilor Gibson. I move that we vote to approve 40-24. Uh, 
Okay. Councillor Gibson moves to approve resolution 40-24, seconded by Councillor Vincent. Uh, motion for the council is to adopt resolution 40-24 as their discussion. Okay. Seeing none, uh, if you are in favor of the adoption of resolution 40-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. The clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parody Cotton Zero? Yes. Micho? Yes. All right. Count, uh, thank you, counselors. Uh, resolution 40 24 has been adopted. All right. Tonight, um, under new business, we also have an other. We have a vote to authorize the city manager to take all necessary action for the city to participate in the New Hampshire Department of Justice state settlement, uh, settlement agreement regarding opioid litigation against five companies, three are major pharmacy chains, CVS, Walmart, and Walgreens, and the other two are opioid manufacturers, uh, Allergan and Teva. What are the wishes of the council tonight? Councilor Witham. Move to support the action. All right, Councilor Witham moves to uh, support the action, seconded by Councilor Gibson. Uh, question before the council is whether to authorize the city manager to take all necessary action for the city to participate uh, in the New Hampshire Department of Justice State Settlement Agreement regarding opioid litigation against CVS, Walmart, Walgreens, Allergan, and Teva. Discussion. Yes, Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Ronald. I do have a question. Um, is this a um, like money situation? Is this? Do, do we receive money for this? Maybe that's a question for the manager. The state receives money, and they have this committee. Um, state legislator set up a uh, fund, an opioid abatement trust fund that receives money from these companies as part of the state settlement. And there's an advisory commission that will oversee doling out this money through a grant process. Thank you uh, for that explanation. I, d I did know about the, uh, the representative who came up with the, the bill of the law. Um, I just didn't know how it was worked, but thank you for that. I appreciate it. Others for discussion? Um, seeing as there is none, if you are in favor of the motion, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. The clerk, will you please call the roll? Councillor Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parody Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. All right. Agreement is approved. Thank you. All right. That will move us to agenda item 17, which is comments by visitors. Summersworth City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinions and views at council meetings. In accordance with Council Rules 7-C, time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the council wishes to suspend the rules. Speakers shall not enter into debate with any person, the mayor, city council members, city manager, or department heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight? No. Anyone who wishes to speak? All right, seeing as there are none, we will move on to closing comments by council. We're going to start to my left. Councillor Pepin. I have nothing this evening. All right, thank you. Councillor Vincent. I have nothing, and I hope this will be a trend. <laughs> thank you. Councillor Gibson. Can't do that. Oh, one second <laughs> thought. No. All right, thank you. Uh, Councillor Parody Cotton Zero. Hmm. <laughs> Nothing to add this All evening. Right. Thank you. Look at this, Councilor Mishu. Oh, I'll break the trend. Uh, <clears throat> all right. I just want to let residents know that it looks like this coming week, within probably the next few days, the former Summersworth Hotel will be coming down. So if anybody has an interest in watching that, do a drive by and check it out. I know I will be. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Great addition. <laughs> Councilor Witham. Thank you. Just a few quick items this evening. Uh, first of all, uh, manager requested if we had any questions for Mr. Herndon from Community Power. I did ask at our last meeting with him, uh, and I just remind the manager to connect with him uh, to make sure he gets some information regarding uh, their uh, coverage for any uh, data breaches that could occur. In, in today's day and age, these things happen. And typically you want to have uh, to provide for credit monitoring of the consumer that's whose data is breached. And I just want to make sure that backstop is there as we move into this uh, agreement with them. Um, one of my fellow counselors here tonight mentioned parking in a report. Uh, I think it was Council of Vincent and Traffic Safety. Uh, a couple of things come to mind with regard to parking, and I'm just 
airing them now so we can get them on the radar screen, if you will. One is, as I talk with business owners in the downtown, there is a, a, a vibe about parking, uh, not so much up this way, but certainly uh, the Market Street area, uh, uh, the, the short section of Main Street as you get towards Market. Um, I think our time-limited parking is potentially good there. However, uh, the lack of enforcement is what makes it not good, right? Uh, if there's two-hour parking, that's only good if it's enforced. And right now, we only have a part-time parking enforcement officer. Uh, some business owners have talked about pay and display. Well, similarly, unless there's enforcement, that doesn't work. So uh, I, I, I have a concern about enforcement. Uh, what I'd like for data, uh, if we could, and it's not a rush, I'd like to know sort of what is the revenue that parking enforcement generates and does it cover the part-time cost of the parking enforcement officer? Uh, and if the answer is yes, then could we add a second part-time parking enforcement officer? Or, And I know they're hard to find and hard to have people fill roles, but just some metrics to look at that data would be uh, helpful. Um, one last note about parking. Uh, I know I mentioned it some time ago, uh, but our parking spots in the downtown, it's been 10 plus years since we did that work and the parking spaces are less than defined now. The, the parking spot painting needs to be done. So I do hope we can include that in the budget uh, to not only do crosswalks and stop bars, but to look at, at least in the, the, the area that we did as part of the downtown upgrade, uh, to have those uh, remarked uh, in this coming construction season. My last comment, uh, just sort of a community uh, request. Uh, uh, ball fields, and obviously the Pines is the one that I watch the most, but uh, we're in the season where people want to get outdoors. It feels like you should be outside, and you should be. But stay off the ball fields. They're too soft still. Uh, I could go into baseball field anatomy with you. I won't, uh, but they're too soft. Uh, we have signs that say stay off for a reason. Uh, if you value your shoes, don't go on it. But it, it just makes a lot of damage that we have to fix. So appreciate that. So public service announcement. There you go. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Goodwin. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, wanted to talk about the constitutional way uh, project, um, rebuilding project, and specifically the crosswalk on High Street. Um, Councilor uh, Parody Catanzaro had, um, had mentioned it. It's also an item that I have been long interested in. Um, and I guess I, I kind of disagree with the framing that it's separate scope and therefore we should address it later for the interest of time. And much the same way that it was advocated that replacing private retaining walls would be easier because the contractor was mobilized, I feel the same way that this is our opportunity to get a better value for that work now. Um, I would also push back on the engineer's assessment that uh, they're concerned about safety when people are turning right off of Constitutional Way onto High Street because of visibility. Um, surely, I think grade is, is less than ideal there, but the reality is that everyone jaywalks at that corner anyways. So it's either someone's gonna get hit outside of a crosswalk or we're gonna put in a crosswalk and make a safe, compliant crossing that people can be within. And even if it's not, you know, uh, in an engineer's traffic model, the ideal crosswalk situation, I think there could definitely be an acceptable crosswalk there. There was one there historically before we did the uh, reconstruction. Um, there is an absolute desire line. If you go to downtown and go to the businesses on High Street, you know what I'm talking about. No one is crossing Highland Street and then High Street and then Constitutional Way to make that crossing you are jaywalking. So, I think the opportunity is now to include that in the project. It would obviously be a change order into the additional uh, scope that has already been priced and contracted, but I would encourage uh, and will advocate for that moving forward with the constitutional way work because I think it's just more efficient and I think it is of high value to the downtown businesses in the community. Um, <clears throat> for the retaining walls, uh, 
uh, completely agree, encouraging the uh, private owners on a constitutional way that that uh, now is the time to do that. I wonder if we might also provide them resources, and I don't know if they apply, but if there's any regional re revolving loan funds or um, EDC type money that might be available, grants or um, lower interest rate loans that might help them finance that, then maybe we can help nudge them towards those resources. Um, and then on parking, it was actually me that uh, mentioned parking in the report out of the Economic Development Committee, um, and there are some excellent notes in there. Uh, I will restate uh, my sort of public opinion on parking in that, um, you know, many people uh, say that there isn't a parking issue downtown, and I was definitely one of those people for about 20 years. Um, there is lots of empty parking in the downtown within a two or three block radius, and if you go to other communities with vibrant downtowns, Dover, Portsmouth, you anticipate to park where you find a spot and to walk to, your, to the place you're intending to go to. That uh, expectation is not in Summersworth yet. Um, I think there's a number of reasons for that expectation. Um, traffic calming, wayfinding, um, education of where parking is available, uh, parking enforcement, so the turnover of those spaces is obviously part of that. Um, so I think perception is reality, and the perception is that there's a parking problem, and so there is a parking problem. So um, whether that solution is to build more parking, yet to be seen. Um, I know that we have received some grant proceeds to have a traffic survey done of the downtown, so that is in uh, process right now to get a municipal, a better understanding of the on-street and off-street municipal parking spaces in the downtown to update our data on that. I think that's gonna be important. Um, but I think economic development is very much interested in improving the you know, wayfinding component of this, the education component of this, um, to address some of those issues. And we did talk extensively, and we will continue to talk extensively about uh, parking enforcement as a critical piece to um, the puzzle in solving the issues on high end market and parts of Main Street. Um, and you know, the city manager had indicated to us that the, we do have a part time parking enforcement uh, position um, and uh, historically those part-time positions are often difficult to fill because uh, it's a part-time role and uh, doesn't you know doesn't fit everyone's needs um, and it I think this committee economic development committee's feeling and we haven't discussed this fully is that we might there might be an appetite for either allocating those hours differently so that the parking enforcement is happening at times that are peak business, uh, that support peak business in the downtown, be it Friday evening, Saturday morning, Saturday day, Saturday night, whatever whatever it is. We haven't determined that yet, but there's there's a component of you know maybe reallocating those hours to better serve the needs of the downtown businesses. Um, and then there's the thought of you know bringing on additional services, like how can we how can we afford that? And you know. Obviously, we could hire a second part-time office officer or uh, make it a full-time position. Um, but we were also talking about potentially using resources with our abutting communities. If uh, Berwick, for example, ever had need for a part-time parking enforcement officer, it is possible that we could enter an agreement with them. There'd be a host community that would hire the person full-time, and then they would contract out um, hours to the other community, so essentially we would be sharing resources. So one full-time employee, easier to retain someone, they get benefits, they have a full-time job, um, but they're splitting their time between two communities. Uh, Baroque just being one example, we have Rochester and Dover as abutting communities that this is conceivable with. Obviously it uh, would be a nuanced conversation, but again, uh, with resources being limited, it is an option on the table, um, and I just wanted to say that economic development is very much looking forward to continuing the conversation on parking and welcome folks' ideas. Um, and then final closing thought, um, on the conversation comments earlier on the warming center, I guess my, uh, my position on that is I support the warming center and that finding solutions for the negative externalities is something I'm interested in doing, but I am not interested in threatening an organization that is providing a much needed service. Um, we all know that we are working towards a better, more permanent solution, but um, I'm unwilling to sort of go that far. I think we should stay focused on what's the baby and what's the bathwater, and 
I think in this scenario, uh, there's externalities we want to address, but not at the expense of the primary service. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Cameron. Thank you, Anna. Um, I'm kind of excited to talk about something a little bit different tonight. Many of you have heard me talk about over the past few weeks about my initiative from the Eyes on 30 on Don't Trash Summersworth. Um, it has been probably a year in discussion, and it is coming to fruition. Finally, I'm very excited about it. Um, we are going to have a Facebook page up and running probably within the next couple weeks. We are going to start our first cleanup on April 20th. It's, go it's going to be the third Saturday once a month from 2 to 3 in the afternoon. That way you can go out, do your errands, go shopping, and then come join us for just an hour of your time to help clean up Summersworth. Um, it will go to December. I have all the locations um, marked out, and we will post where we'll be meeting. So our first one on April 20th, we'll meet at the upper parking lot of Home Depot, and we are going to work our way through Commercial Drive and Handle Road and get that area cleaned up. So that's our first one. It's very exciting. More info to come, so I hope you'll join us. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Last up, Councilor Messi. Thank you. Uh, concerning the draft uh, housing proposal, if I could get a copy of that prior to the next meeting or whenever it's complete. And then um, behind the new fire station, there was a shed that a football entity was using. Went by the other day. It's still in kind of disrepair. Thank you. Uh, so if we can get an update on that. Also, the um, our shed is kind of in disrepair, so I'm hoping through the budget we could fix, at least get some paint on the eaves. Uh, it, I was interested in some of the verbiage on the Economic Development Committee where you want to limit business, i.e. car washes. I really don't get that because people like me don't want to wash their car. I want to go through. There's only two. There's the new one, and the other one on High Street Courts is one out of one away. So, and then we talk about threatening, but did I hear that whether it's Firestone or whatever about some of the chemicals? Isn't that a threat? I mean, we all need to have our vehicles worked on. On another, on economic. Uh, Parking downtown, I was approached by a business owner that he would like to purchase a parcel of property and make a parking lot um, or work with the city on that. I would hope we would be receptive to that because in another establishment I go to, which I sort of don't go to because I'm continually barraged about parking, so... Uh, at least this individual came up with a proposal. So if we could at least listen to that. And the crosswalk on High Street to Constitutional Way, I continually hear that we are a walking community. So I don't understand the theory that it's difficult to walk whatever that street is. I used to walk up the Hilltop School and then across High Street and then across to the other side. Is that difficult to do? The reason it was taken away, the crosswalk that came across High Street from Highland Street, that's the word, was because the water would come down Highland Street and go into the barber shop that used to be there or Al Murdo's uh, shop. So that's why there's a raised crosswalk to impede that. It isn't, I mean, so if we're going to do that, and if you're going to want to do that, then you better be prepared that there's going to be a business that's going to get flooded out. So that's the history of it. So that's what's going on. Other than that, that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up is item 19, future agenda items. Are there any agenda items requested for future meetings? 
Okay, seeing none. I'll make a motion to adjourn. We're almost there. Almost there. <laughs> Next up is 20 non public sessions. We have none. Last step is uh, adjournment. Councillor Vincent moves to the City Council meeting. Our City Council stand in adjournment until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Seconded by Councillor Parody Captain Zero. Question for the Council is adjournment. If you're in favor, please state by saying aye. Aye. If you're opposed, aye. please state by saying no. All right. Eyes appear to have it. Eyes have it. We are adjourned. <coughs> Thank you.